Okay, here we go, mod 150. This is our, um, we're gonna be learning about lights, lighting, um, how, how we install lights, type of different, different types of lights, fixtures, wall lights, uh, lumens, wattage, a little bit of everything. Not 100% specific, but a little bit of everything. And here we go, it's injection lumens, candle power, and foot candles. Uh, like I explained to you earlier, this is the how we determine what, uh, how much light we get, how much lumens we get, and and the foot candles we get on our surfaces. And if you see the video prior to this, I kind of explained it a little bit better. But this is um, a good example of what it looks like and what uh, what's happening. And here's how we uh, definition of, of what foot candle. The term foot candle and candle power are often confused. A foot candle FC is used to measure lumens or a total amount of light per unit area. So like I showed you guys, uh, get one square foot, one by one square foot, one foot away. How much light we get on a desktop is, is uh, foot candles. So, and that's uh, real important uh, when we work at, at in an office or if we work in a studio or whatever we do in life, we have to have a certain amount of foot candles on our subjects so that we can do it properly if you're in an operating room or whatever. Okay, and this, we have uh, our lighting techniques. Uh, this is more of a technique that we use to determine how we see things. Let's say, for an example, you have a general lighting. This light here, as it comes down, it's going to cross over this light here. When they cross over, you have a smooth countertop light. So this can be like a spotlight, but if you put enough up there, it's going to make it look smooth. That's why we lose fluorescent lighting, long tubes, because one long tube will do the same thing as three lights. So just to let you know, tasks lights. This is also good for, uh, for shopping malls and stuff like that, because what happens is when you're at a shopping mall and you're looking at clothing it's more of a spotlight looking at a certain clothes that they want you to to buy so when they enhance light on certain items be be aware because they want you to buy that certain item that looks the best because the, the light shining on top of it accent lights we do a lot of accent lights in residential we do a lot of stuff with um, um, Pictures, frames, uh, people have uh, uh, pictures over their mantle, and we have accent lights and just the shine right on top of it. And the further you, you go away from the wall, the more direct light you have on the subject, which won't look as good or depends on your situation. But if you go closer to the wall, a shadow will come down onto it. If you have like a brick um, mantle, it's going to enhance that brick. And it's going to look awesome. But there's different ways of working with lights and accents. Wall wash, what I like about wall washers is that you put a lot of light on the wall and the reflective light comes off, which gives it a nice smooth look on, on, your, on your working area or your room. So it's not, a, uh, it's not a blinding light. And so that's what we do in, in our classrooms. Our classrooms we have, um, these lights here, they actually reflect off the ceiling and they come off the back, which gives a nice smooth light on our, on our work. So it's not, you know, affecting our eyes as much with the direct light. And here's some uh, type of lights that we use. It's, it's common lighting that we use all the time in our, in our homes and, and uh, buildings and stuff. You know, we have our this type of a task light uh, down lighting. We can direct it to what we want to light up. We can direct that towards a wall wash and make a nice wall wash, a nice wall wash there. And these are just some old type fixtures that we use that we don't use anymore actually because they're probably um, incandescent. So incandescent lighting has stopped it stopped in January 2014. So, and you cannot find those in Home Depot. I tried. Uh, more incandescent lights, uh, 
there's just so many different types of lights that we don't concern ourselves with too much, but engineers do, because they lighting engineers they want to make some uh, certain areas look different. You know, like this is like a wall wash up and down. So if you have a, a brick wall that you want to enhance and have some light reflective light, you want to put one of these because he's going to make that brick pop, right? And then sometimes we have lights like these that we have no choice because you have a, a roof, a uh, hardwood ceiling, and we had to put a wall washer. It was just a switch wall washer. It has some light in the room. There's different applications, different reasons why we install lighting. Recess lights, incandescence, down lights. Um, there's so many different types of, um, of uh, lights up here. Um, uh, this is these are halogens you know we don't really use these anymore so but it's a good example of what we used to use uh, reflective cones you use those a lot in the older buildings um, they're fluorescent and the fluorescent just comes in like this and shines down it shines out and it's a lot of reflective light around that uh, chrome plate square lights that's like 1960s you know the homes you'd have those uh, eyeballs are good for uh, enhancing uh, photos or pictures or uh, mantles. You know, instead, if you just have a, a cutout, you just it's just a gimbal. You just a, a, a trim replacement. You can do this type of trim placement. As it goes in the wall higher, means your 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 light goes down deeper like this. But as you come out towards the front of the light, like like uh, like the square light, the light actually shines out. So you get more more light out, uh, spread out. And if it goes in, it goes more of a straight light, almost like a task light or a pinpoint light. Same thing here. You know, th this is like a pinpoint light. So if you had like a, a statue in the middle, like you'd see these at uh, museums, this type of lighting. If you ever guys go to the museum in LA, you see a lot of these lights, a lot of these lights, because they want to enhance certain areas, certain statues, artifacts. Um, pictures, stuff like that. And uh, here's another example of the can light of how we do it. You know, the further back it is, the further back is, is the more the, the light, light is going to shrink. You know, the further to the front of the light, uh, none of these really have it. And then all this light comes down to, to the front page, face here, is going to give light more out and just it's just going to flood out the room. So these are more like task lights, lights that uh, you want to enhance certain areas. Uh, here's some more, some more lighting. You know, chandeliers, candelabras. Um, you know, some uh, pendants. You know, people use a lot of pendants over their tabletops at home. Um, it's more for enhance to make it look good, and it is functional. A lot, uh, it's more of a task light type of a function. So if you have a tabletop, you have three little pendant lights and you want to just enhance that, you can put it on a dimmer and you can have a nice little, you know, dinner with your family on a on an island. Here's some more lighting. It's all lighting, guys. Um, a lot of this stuff is commercial use. You know, and it's reflective light. A lot of the time, this light reflects from the top and goes back down. Reflects the top, goes down. Reflects the light, reflects the top and goes down. When you see these type of angles, it's gonna be the light's gonna reflect like this, like this. And this one was like when it has that type of angle, it's gonna more more of a straight down type of a reflection. So a lot of this stuff is reflective off the back to give you the light you need down below. Okay. You so you have like reflective light and you have direct light. It's kind of a double combination on these type of lights. You see those a lot in uh, uh, warehouses. I see them a lot in warehouses. Like I said, track lights. There were some more track lights that um, they use in, in the commercial aspects. And lights like this, the parabolics, what this does is when you're looking at that, you're not gonna see the light in your eyes, basically. So that's what a parabolic is about, suppose it is. So if you look up, you, that's gonna be a direct light in your eyes. When you look at this parabolic, it focuses all the light to one direction. And if you're looking at it from an angle, you won't really get blinded. 
Yeah, here's another parabolic. Parabolics, well, it's not really type. Well, it's almost like a parabolic type of trim. Um, and we have different diffusers, you know, all these diffusers do a different type of um, uh, lighting for you, you know, and it spreads out more for you so that uh, it's more practical for your use. But when we go into buildings, you might have a parabolic light, the same, this is a frame, but there's a parabolic light that looks like that. What that whole purpose is for computer rooms, uh, big rooms, they might have four or five of those lights and the room is the light is going straight down so when you're in a computer you don't have the light coming from the angles so that interrupt your your viewing point of your computer so we use parabolics to come straight down and you see those a lot in rooms where they use computers like uh, insurance offices and stuff like that service mount lights you find all these um, everywhere Usually find these in warehouses in the back area. They're cheap, they're inexpensive, they're easy to change in and out. Wraparounds, you used to find those a lot in kitchens. Uh, it spreads out the light far enough so that you know you can. It's it's manageable and it gives you the nice look. Um, task areas like this. This is you have three bulbs here, two bulbs here. So this is like for a little bit higher ceiling. It's going to be pushing it down a little bit tough. You know, it might be like a 12 foot ceiling here. This could be an eight foot ceiling. This could be an eight foot ceiling type of type of lights you need to spread out. Um, some of these are good enough for a 10 by 10 or 10 by 20 room. It all depends on how much foot candles you need so you can do your tasks. Commercial industrial lights. These these could be TH or T5s. And you got four of those lights, but these are so bright, it could be HOs, a high outputs. A high output light, you could put those, it depends. It'll, it'll tell you what they're used for. Like, this is, a, this is an eight lamp T8 fixture. This is a T5 fixture, yeah. This is a T5 fixture and T8 fixture. These will tell you if they're high bay lights or low bay lights. Low bay lights is around uh, 12 to 15 feet. High bay lights are around 20 to 25 feet. So because uh, those high bay and low bay lights, they'll be specific of what you need to have. And they put these in gymnasiums now they, on the schools because they're, they're more efficient. Some more. Here, oh, here's, here's a parabolic. See this? Here's a parabolic. So and here's a parabolic. Here we go. It's a good example of the light when you it diffuses so when you're looking at it it doesn't blind you and the lights far back enough but it goes straight down and those parabolic lenses focus the light straight down so you're looking uh, at your at your uh, at your area of work you no know, clear and it's not reflecting off your computer screen troffers are just general lighting just to spread out the light as you need it here you go. Here's some high bay lights again. Um, the, look at the design they have. Uh, the high bay lights. It's, it has a little light bulb in here that's going to push it out like this. And the edges of this will just define how much light is coming out. But if you put the diffuser at the end of it, it's going to diffuse it to come out right away. So, hence low bay lights, high bay lights. They focus it like a. It's like a having a. Um, flashlight shine it down it's you can go higher because it's going to come out but if you twist it so that the light spreads out it's going to be doing this i'm not too sure if i can explain it right to you guys but i think you all get the picture other type of lights you know there's so many different types of lighting and just because some look cool they have a purpose so lights really have a purpose um Sometimes we think, oh no, that, that's an ugly design, or we don't even care. But to a designer, a light designer, they know what they want, and they know what light look they're looking for, and how much light is going to be spread out to area. Because they're looking at uh, at foot candles. How much foot candles do we need to walk uh, for a walkway? You know, we see a lot of these boat houses, but when you're walking up to a light like this, it's like almost in your face. You know, we don't like that. We have this down light that when you walk up to it, it's just shining the door, the, the, the doorstep. Uh, you can use these up higher. Um, here you go, parking garages. So you want a diffused light for parking garages just so that it diffuses it properly so that when you're walking in, when you're into a, um, a parking structure, you have these around 25 feet apart because you don't need that much light. Your foot candles, uh, 
platform on a, on a um, parking structure is a lot different than a classroom. So they just want you to be able to see and to get out, get in, get your car, move. And also what determines how much foot candles you have is how much daylight you have there. So, so that's why a lot of times uh, lights, it's, it's, it, it, it's a uh, engineer's job to know how much daylight you have in, 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 the, um, in the area, how much daylight you have, and then there's a formula for daylight to foot candles, how much you need for nighttime. So it's, it's a formula. We just need to know that they're doing their job and we can install the work, install the lights. Here we go, so the pole mount lights. Each one of these lights inside here, if you see that uh, the metal inside, they do a different pattern. Some lights will give a pattern like this, some lights will give a pattern coming in even, and some will give a pattern straight down and a little bit out, or they'll give a wide pattern like this. So when you guys install these lights, check out the pattern mount, how, what pattern it's giving you. And then when you're, when you're working as a technician, you understand what the engineer's understanding. And you're not just working, you know, you're not just installing, you actually, you know what's going on, you know what's going down. You've got the floodlights, um, you put these close to your subject, you can wash it up, or you can go further out, and you wash, and you go directly in, so it's like a, like a light in your face type of deal. You know, for, for uh, you use a lot of these for uh, signs. Exit signs, everything is LED, so these will be LED. They only work, these only turn on when there's an emergency. Emergency means when power turns off to this fixture 100%, then these lights will turn on. If you turn, you know, they're all constantly on, constantly on. These, LED, these uh, exit signs will be lit up constantly. Just be lit up, lit up, lit up. But when power dies out, this turn, these turn on. This is a combo right here, combo pack, combo exit sign. And this is a emergency light. These are emergency lights. So you have to have a certain amount of emergency lights in the hallway for billing, for escapes, and stuff like that. Um, and you have to have the exit signs. If it fits red, if it's green, you know, what does it mean? It's, these are uh, things we have to understand when you're installing it. Uh, here's a basic uh, uh, fluorescent light. You're pretty much just charging up the air inside the light, which emits uh, visible light. Basically, what's telling it's like a fluorescent light bulb, um, fluorescent lighting fixture. And so, when you break a lighting fixture, you see all this white gas that comes out. That's what you're electrifying, and you're charging it. You're charging it up, and you're making it hot, and it's going to glow. And that's what you're doing with fluorescent lighting. So that's, that stuff is not good to inhale. So a lot of fluorescent lights are going out. I've worked with these. I worked with these a couple of times. These are brighter than, than fluorescent lighting, but it's, it's the same concept. You're, you're electrifying the, uh, look at this, the mercury atoms, UV radiation. You're, uh, you're electrifying the, the gases inside of it and it's, turning bright but this was way brighter than a fluorescent light we used to use a lot of those I haven't seen those now after five years since five years ago I haven't seen them um, more lighting just it is all different type of lighting but pretty much all this stuff here was old 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 style lights um, and we're going to LEDs most companies because it's more efficient uh, you can, it, they're lighter, they're easy to use, easy to change, and they last a long time. Different aspects of lights, you, you got your, your jumbotrons, all LEDs, uh, super bright. It's, it, yeah, this stuff is amazing right here. It's so bright you can see them from in the, in the middle of day, so it's, it's amazing how bright these lights can get. We got path lights, just small LEDs. Another combo. Before on the um, on your on your uh, traffic signals, we used to have a 130 uh, volt light. What that means is the the filament used to be back in my day. The filament was thicker, so they considered a 130 uh, volt light. The reason why is because it's harder to break. So if you move it around, 
it is since it was thicker, it was harder to break than the than the older style filaments. But they don't use those anymore. They use LEDs. More LEDs. Um, the nice thing about LEDs, you can get them now that change color. I have a few in my house that I can control with my phone and change the color. If it's Christmas time, I can make them green and red, whatever, Halloween, orange. Pretty cool. It's, it's you know, lights, I mean, lights are amazing. You can, you can control them now. You can control light bulbs. You, you have light bulbs that have music in them. And so, it, you know, everything's to your imagination, whatever you want to do with your house or with clients. Cove light is pretty cool. So if you notice in our restroom, we have cove lights that's indirect into your eyes. Like this is indirect, which is nice. It gives a nice smooth feeling. Like this would be real smooth feeling and not direct lights like these would be. So these are enhancing the, uh, the signage. Well, these are just giving you smooth lights. So when you eat, it's a, it's a nice smooth area. You know, smooth look. Uh, RFI free LED ceiling light fixtures. Um, these are, this will have a, a, a lens over it so that you just get a smooth look to it. It's a troffer. Uh, these little LEDs are real bright, but the troffer will diffuse the light or the, the diffuser will diffuse the light so that you get a nice even look to it. Uh, RFI free lighting ideal. I'm not too sure How about that stuff though. Never dealt with it. Here's some more low bay lights. Here we go, low bay lights. It's 250, two, uh, 2,500 lumens. It's consuming 75 watts. You know, if you if you understand, back in the day, if we had a 75 white watt light bulb, that sucker got so hot you can cook on it. You know, you know if you touch it, you burn yourself. Now. You get 2,500 lumens out of a 75 watt light. It's it's amazing. 2,500 lumens is a lot, a lot of light, and it's LED. So the nice thing is it's it's you get more light and pay less electricity bills. More lights, LED structures. If you notice how far apart they're um, they're separated, you're looking about 25 to 30 feet separation from front and back. And that's, that's really good because if you see how much shadows we have around this area, so they're just picking this area where you're parking to get your light. So everything past this point is kind of shadowy. So it's not really necessary. It's just for driving, but where you're, when you park your car, that's where you, they want you to have the most light. So that's where our foot candles come in and lumens. And we have these special hazardous lights. Uh, these use these industrial areas. They're like a, the glass on these are like super thick, and it's made for explosion. If you notice that this is a screw-on type, you have to screw that sucker on, and then it has holes where you put your pipe in there. It can be a rigid conduit. Use these for paint booths, um, uh, stuff like that. Uh, uh, Using in the wood shops, you know, all that wood, uh, paint booths. Like I said, where else? Um, uh, you can use them, use them in uh, uh, air, con air conditioning rooms like uh, freezers and stuff like that. But it's Article 500, that's real important. You know, Article 500 is really important, it requires like gas stations. You know, why is it that gas station, everything 18 inches below, you have to have a, a rigid conduit? It's a question. There we go. Here we got some troffers. This is old style. I'm not too sure if they're using this anymore, but this is what we used to use. It's a plug and play. Uh, we call them um, in, in the field where master and slaves, where this had three ballasts and this had one. So the one ballast here controlled this one as well. And so then you go to the next one. One, one troffer will have three ballasts and the other one will have none. So you can have one or it can have none. And this one had all the ballast and the wire and this kind of controlled the other light. So it's just what we call them in the field. Um, but this type of installation is you, you get power to the first junction box, get power to that, and it's just a plug and play. You just get two points, plug it in, connect it, put your, uh, support your, 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 your wire, 
plug in the next one, plug in the next one, it's fast. So you have somebody putting this in, you're running this as a, as a technician, you have a, an apprentice usually putting the lights, you come in uh, as a journeyman, you're hooking up all the lights, and that, it's, it's supposed to be faster. Uh, it is faster, but you have more parts, more material, and labor's cheaper when you do it this way, but material is more expensive, so, um, you know, give and take. Nowadays it's different. Uh, we have we have a um, like the lights we have in this office here is controlled by low voltage because they're all, all LEDs. Uh, some simple lights here. Uh, just this is like track lighting, basic stuff like that for us to do. It, you know, it's, all this stuff is is when you do it, you might do it for the first time, learn it, and then you move on. You do something you know new. It's always nice doing something new. Uh, if you look at, if you go to Costco and stuff like that, you have Unistra or, or different applications, and they like these type of lights because they're high or medium bay, low bay. But these are inexpensive, but you have to use a Unistra. A Unistra goes all the way across, and you support it, and then it's just like one long bar, and then you can support all your lights to that bar. And it, ha and it has holes in, in each uh, of this Unistra so that you can just easily attach it. They have special nuts that go in here that, that are spring-loaded, so when you screw something into it, 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 it holds attention for you, and you can just hang a light anywhere you need it. Dimmers, we got, the um, thing is about dimmers, you can have a three-way dimmer, like this one's showing us. You can have a single, uh, a single dimmer, one light dimmer source. Um, when you install lights, switches, I'm sorry, and lights, they have to be compatible with each other. That's the most important thing. Because now you have an LED lamp that might not be compatible with the proper switch. So make sure when you read the labels, when you buy the switches, that it's compatible with an LED and that type of LED. Sometimes if it's not compatible, you won't be able to dim it fully 100%, but you, and also it might flicker a little bit. So you gotta be careful how that works when you're installing these. Be mindful of what you're doing, you know. It, it, and, then, and sometimes some of these lights, I just installed one the other day, a motion sensor, and it had to be grounded. And she didn't have a proper grounding. So I didn't know that. And start, I started reading the uh, information on the switch. And I said, oh, that's why it's not working. So it's, you know, it's good to read what you're doing first, and then you know for the next time. And when you know the next time, you just become faster, faster and better. Fluorescent lights, you can, you can control fluorescent lights. There's special uh, trans, um, ballast to control them, special uh, switches to control fluorescent lights. Ballast control the light, so there's special ballast to control the lamps, so special dimmers to control the ballast to control the light to dim. Nowadays, we're getting away from fluorescence. I mean, we're showing you fluorescence so that you know what it is, so that you're going to run into it, and, but as these phase out, we're going to LED systems. And LEDs are controlled with uh, Cat5 or Cat6. And then this is a whole control system, which will be Title 24. You're going to see that a lot. If you're in commercial, if you're in commercial aspects, Title 24 is very important because you're going to be using this everywhere, and it's a little bit uh, tricky. You're not 100% sure what's going on, but when you start doing it, you're going to understand a lot more. And it's real important that you understand how it works from photosensitive wall controls. All this stuff, timers, you got the blue box, you got so many different styles of time clocks that you need to control the lighting system. And that's Tile 24. That's, I'm not too sure if we're gonna go through Tile 24, but I recommend you guys go online, look up Tile 24 and see what it's recommending you guys to have. Like a room like this size we have, we have to have be able to, to turn off the lights, 50% uh, of the lights at any time. That's part of Tile 24. Um, we have time clocks for the whole building. So the whole building has to turn off at, at a certain time. Got to look up Tile 24. I believe it's after 9 o'clock. But when you come into the building, you have to be able to override that time clock because it's going to kill everything. So if you walk in, you turn a dial, it gives you one hour or 30 minutes or whatever the case may be for you to turn on the lights as you walk in if you come after 9 o'clock. 
So this is part of Title 24. It's a lot. It's a it's a book. Title 24 is a book, basically California state law of what we have to have for proper lighting, lighting con, uh, consumption. HID lamps. You still have a lot of those. It's high output lamps. Uh, they run off a of ballast. They're super super bright. Um, LEDs are coming to effect that they're just as bright as the as the HIDs. Um, and it also shows here you, you got 122 77 type of fixtures. They come in. Uh, you get, you got your different colors. You have to have a, a an HID that can be um, white or a HID that can be yellow, either or. But it's you know. A lot of times when you have white light outside, it it, it it's it's light. Um, I forget what we call it, but you just have too much white light outside. It kind of ruins the. Uh, the, the look and stuff. I'm not too sure what they call it. Same thing. This is all automation. This oh, is automating, you know, uh, three phase, four wire type of type of light. You just got to be, this whole thing is telling you that there's diff different types of lights. It's not telling you how to do it, but it's just letting you know that there's so many different styles of lighting and ways of, of it being controlled that you gotta be careful. Uh, you can't just walk into a job because a light doesn't work, say it's a light bulb or it's a transformer. It could be, it, it could be something else. So voltage, you know your voltage is, is very, very important. Your proper voltage. Always check, when I do, uh, when I do troubleshooting, I see a light that's working. I get my, 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 uh, my meters and I, that's my base point. If I see a light that's off, and off and on. The one I look that's on, I look at the voltage. I see what it's doing. I check at the amperage. I see what's happening over here, voltage and amperage over here, how it's working to this and that. And then I start to determine what's supposed to be on these other two. So when you have something that's not working, don't just assume it's a light bulb or it's a, or it's a ballast. Check out the voltage, see where you're at. Now some voltages are, are 7,000 volts. You won't be able to test it. But at least you understand the what's going on on this end because you cannot control 7,000 volts with with uh, 7,000 volts. You got to control it with 12 volts or 24 volts or 120 volts. So somehow you're controlling that 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 uh, light with something over here with a lower voltage, especially when you have a system like this. So it's something you're gonna have to learn on the field. You can't really learn in a classroom. But as long as you're aware of it, that's the most important thing, being aware. All right, guys, this is a part of it. Uh, I'm going to start expecting more out of you. Uh, I need you guys to really learn. Uh, here's uh, simple information. Write three important things you learned uh, during this class, uh, during this little um, uh, talk I, I'm giving you guys. Uh, And just uh, write a question you have about the material and thoughts you had about the material. Uh, it's real important to do these three for me. The important thing is to learn during class. Uh, two, write questions you have about the material. One, write, uh, write a thought you had about the material. And let me know what you think about uh, foot candles, lumens. If, you know, it's hard to fully understand it, but at the same time, uh, as long as you have a, uh, an idea of what it is, and knowing that you, your foot candles is what you're what you're using, what you see, and lumens is how much light is being produced for you. So when you go to the store and, and you look at a light bulb, light fixture, it'll tell you how much lumens. It won't say 900, 700 lumens. So now you have an understanding. Lumens means how much light it's producing. Doesn't mean how much foot candles you're gonna have on your subject, because that that 900 lumens you can have it at 15 feet high, and you can have like three three foot candles on your on your subject or on your desktop, which may not be enough. So you might need a thousand five hundred lumens. So lumens is really important. Okay, one other thing I have not t talked to you about is is gonna be um, um, uh, color. You have uh, five thousand. You have 6,000, you have 2,700. This is Kelvin. This is the color you're gonna have. 
uh, of your light fixtures. The, the higher the number means the more bluish colors you got, more daylight it looks. The, the lower the number, the Kelvin color, is going to be the more yellow, softer looking colors you have. So, you know, in your own personal house, you know, when you're cooking food, if you have a red tomato and an orange light or, uh, or a yellow light, it's going to be orange and look, look it's going to look like a, that tomato is going to look orange instead of red. But if you go into natural colors, more daylight looking, it's going to be more like if you're outside picking it from the fields and you're looking at it, so it's nice and red. So it's real important to what you, where, how you use these type of lights and what aspects. You know, when you do that for customers, when you show them the differences, uh, they're going to know you know your stuff and they're going to you know, tend to use you more than anybody else because you know what you're talking about. And um, that's the color uh, color ratios you have, or the, uh, the numbers of the River Kelvin lights. Uh, if you have any questions, please text me, call me, get a hold of me, tell me what you want to learn more. Tell me you didn't understand something. I'm here to help. Um, if I make a mistake, let me know. Hey, I'm here. Uh, I'm here for to serve you guys. So please, I want you guys to learn. Contact me anytime. Bye.